This is the second video lecture for section 2.4 on rank methods. In this lecture, I'll be talking about something called irrelevant alternatives. So we've been talking about rank methods in which we have points that are assigned to each candidate based on where they're ranked on a ballot in a non-decreasing way. So we have a number of points for first place ballots, number of points for second place, third place, and so on. And now we have a specific kind of rank method called the board account. And in that board account, the number of points that you get is equal to the number of candidates that you're ranked higher than on each ballot. So rank method, sort of the general, the, uh, general idea of assigning points based on your ranking, board account is a specific way of assigning those points. So if we have a voter profile here, we want to look at how this example illustrates whether or not a rank method satisfies the Condorcet winner criterion. Remember that the Condorcet winner criterion, which we abbreviate CWC, means that if there is a Condorcet winner, if there is a candidate that beats all of their opponents in one-on-one -on -one matchups, then our method should find the same winner as the Condorcet method. So let's just quickly work through this profile and figure this out. So what we're hoping for is that these two winners, we want these to match. We want the same winner from the Condorcet method as the winner that we get from the board account method. Okay. So how do we do the Condorcet method? Well, we've got three candidates, A, B, and C. So we wanna look at A versus B. We wanna look at A versus C. We wanna look at B versus C. So all of those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and remember we have three of those matchups when we have three candidates. So in the A versus B election, these four voters in the first row of my voter profile, they like A the best, so they vote for A. These three voters in the second row of my profile, they like B the best, so they vote for B. And so four is more than three, so A beats B in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. If I look at A versus C, the four voters, they still vote for A because A is their top choice. The three voters, they would like to vote for B because B is their top choice, but they can't because this is A versus C. So instead they vote for their second choice, which is C. But still four is more than three, so A beats C in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. And if we look at B versus C, the four voters can't vote for A right now because A is not one of these two candidates. So instead they vote for their second choice, which is B. And the three voters, they like B the best, so they vote for B. And so B wins seven to zero, B beats C. So what we have here is that A beat all of their opponents, A beat B and A beat C. So A is the Condorcet winner. All right, what about the board account winner? So now what we do is we assign points based on where the candidates are ranked on these ballots. So we wanna have points for A, points for B, and points for C. And when we have three candidates for the board account, first place is gonna be worth two points, second place is going to be worth one point, and third place is going to be worth zero points. So for the four voters, they have A ranked first, first place is worth two points, so A is going to get four times two, which is eight points for those ballots. B is ranked second on those four voters' ballots. Second place is worth one point, so that's gonna be four times one, which is four. And C is ranked last, so C is going to get zero points for those ballots, four times zero is zero. For the three ballots, B is ranked first, so B gets two points for each of those ballots, three times two is six. C is ranked second, so C gets one point for each of those ballots. Three times one is three. And then A is ranked last, so A gets zero points for those ballots. Three times zero is zero. And then we add up the points that we got on each of these ballots. So A has a total of eight points, B has a total of 10 points, and C only got three points. So what we see down here is that B is the board account winner. So since there was a Condorcet winner and our method, our board account, didn't choose that candidate as the winner, this example shows that board account does not satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here, I want to continue with ex this example because C was a loser either way, right? So we know we don't have the Condorcet winner criterion, but I want to illustrate something else, another way in which this election method is, is unfair in some sense. So C was a loser either way. C was not the Condorcet winner, uh, and in fact, uh, and, and uh, C was also not the board account winner. So let's eliminate C. Let's say, well, let's just get rid of C. Like nobody really likes C all that much. So we're gonna get rid of C and sort of imagine that C is just not there anymore. And now let's think about who the Condorcet winner is 
and who the board account winner is. Well, now we only have two candidates, which means there's only one one-on-one -on -one matchup. There's only A versus B. A gets these four votes, and B gets these three votes, and A beats B. That's the only matchup we had, so A wins. And what about the board account? Well, now we only have two candidates. So we only have first place and we only have second place. Last place is always worth zero. And first place means that you beat the one other opponent. So the number of points you get would be one. So it's really the same thing, right? So A would get four times one, which is four points. That's all A gets. And B would get three times one, which is three points. That's all B gets. And four is more than three. So A is again the winner. So getting rid of this sort of candidate that nobody really likes makes our winner match up. It changes the result of the board account election. With C in there, B was the winner, but if we eliminate C, A is the winner. So this is called the spoiler effect, right? So what's happening is that when we add C into the election, so if we, when we imagine that we had A versus B, that's sort of our original situation, and then we add C in, what happens is that the board account winner changes from A to B. So C shows up in the election and says, hey everybody, now I'm here, and the board account winner changes from A to B. So C never really had a chance of winning the election, but C simply being there changed the result among the other two candidates. So C was never going to be a winner in regardless in either one of these situations. And so that's why we say C is a spoiler. So C showing up didn't help C do anything, didn't help C win, but it changed the election uh, from someone else. So this is called the spoiler effect. So the spoiler effect occurs when we add a new candidate to an election that causes the result to switch between two other candidates. So in this situation, we have an original election where voters prefer A over B, and then a third candidate, C, shows up, and now voters prefer B over A. And if that doesn't seem particularly unfair to you or, or strange, let's think about it a different way. Let's imagine that we have pies. So we're finishing dinner and you and your friends are deciding to order dessert. And the waiter tells you that, the, that they have two choices. You've got apple pie and you've got blueberry pie. And you discuss the options with your friends and then you decide, no, you know what, we're, we like the apple pie. We like apple better than blueberry. And then the waiter returns and the waiter tells you that they forgot to tell you, you know what, we actually also have cherry pie. So, you know, think about that too. And then you say, all right, well now let's consider all three of these options. And when you consider your options, you decide to have blueberry pie. So hopefully that seems a little strange to you. When the choice was apple versus blueberry, you decided on apple. And then suddenly you have this third option and you don't choose that third option, but you change your decision that you already made between the two choices that you had. That's what the spoiler effect is doing. We've got this third choice that suddenly shows up and we don't choose that third choice. We just change so that now we switch the decision that we already made between the other two choices. So another illustration of this in a real world election is in the 2000 US presidential election. So it, we talked about this before uh, in a previous lecture, but we have Al Gore, who was the Democratic candidate, George W. Bush, who was the Republican candidate, and if you just go on polling and sort of analysis of voter preferences, if it was just Al Gore versus George W. Bush, even without the Electoral College and the other sort of crazy stuff that happened in 2000, the winner would very likely have just been Al Gore. But once we add Ralph Nader, the Green Party candidate, into the election, the winner switched not to Ralph Nader, but the winner switches from Al Gore to George W. Bush. So again, the spoiler effect is illustrated by these minor or third party candidates showing up and kind of messing with the result. So another name for the spoiler effect, the sort of fancy name for it is independence of irrelevant alternatives or IIA. And so the idea here is that the spoiler is this irrelevant alternative. So they're irrelevant because they can't win the election. And so they, uh, because they can't win the election, what we hope would happen is that a new candidate showing up shouldn't change the result of the election. So an election method does satisfy the independence of irrelevant alternatives condition if it doesn't suffer from the spoiler effect. So how do we tell if IIA is satisfied? So we're hoping that the spoiler effect doesn't happen. That's what we want. If we want IIA to happen, then we don't want the spoiler effect. So if we're trying to find a spoiler, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a particular profile and try to see if we can find a candidate who we think might be the spoiler. 
So we remove that candidate and figure out the election without that candidate, and then we find the winner with that candidate. And if the winner changes between two non-spoiler candidates, then the method that we're using suffers from the spoiler effect, and in other words, does not have independence from irrelevant alternatives. Let me try to break it down for you a little bit more simply. So here are some different scenarios that could happen. So A beats B in the original election, but when C shows up, B wins. That would mean that C is a spoiler. So again, that's the apple, blueberry, and cherry pies example. You already decided that you liked apple pie more than blueberry, but once you have the option for cherry, you change your mind and now want blueberry. That's the spoiler effect. But here are a couple scenarios where we're not seeing a spoiler effect. If A beats B, and when C shows up, A still wins, there's no spoiler. C was not a spoiler in that scenario because, again, you wanted apple pie more than blueberry pie, and now once you have the option for cherry pie, you say, nope, we still want apple pie. No spoiling happens there. Another situation could be that you like apple pie more than blueberry pie, and then once you have the option for the cherry pie, you say, you know what, waiter, that sounds pretty good. Let's use the cherry pie. So C was not a spoiler there because C actually showed up and then became the winner of the election. That's not spoiling because to be a spoiler, you have to be an irrelevant alternative. So, so far we've considered a bunch of different methods for finding the winner of an election with more than two candidates. We've talked about plurality voting, which is very common here in the United States. We've also talked about a couple of alternative methods, Condorcet's method, and in this section we've talked about rank methods and board account. And so far we found flaws with each of these methods. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to continue this process, we're going to look at some more methods, and we're going to continue our search for a perfect or fair voting system. So more methods and more fairness criteria to analyze those methods. I'll see you then.